Story recap tier. Today I'm going to explain a horror film called Twins of Evil. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In Karnstein, a group of Puritans led by Gustav Weil goes to take a maiden by force, accusing her of witchcraft. Despite trying to prove her innocence by wearing a cross, the Puritans don't believe her. Hence, they burn her at the stake. Soon, identical twins Maria and Frida make their way to Karnstein to live with their relatives after recently becoming orphans. When they arrive in town, their aunt, Katy Weil, greets them fondly. At home, Caddy tells them to change to a more modest attire because Gustav, their uncle, is very religious. Although Maria tries to respect Caddy's orders, Frida is more impertinent. Because of this, Maria non-verbally reprimands Frida. When Caddy is about to show the twins to their room, Gustav arrives. Right away, he shows disdain for their clothing, just as Caddy predicted. After giving them a small lecture, Gustav doesn't stay long because he must attend the meeting for their brotherhood. There, they rally on burning their suspected worshippers of the devil. One of the men speaks up, saying that there's a woman who lives alone and refuses to take a husband. As more gossip arises about the woman's immortality, the men all chant to burn her. Meanwhile, the twins argue about their new home. While Frida seems determined to be disobedient, Maria wants to diligently follow their orders because she's worried about Caddy. So, Frida says she'll find a way to get away from there. On the other hand, Gustav and his men ride out to the cottage of the woman, Goethe, whom they suspect to be a servant of the devil. However, they find Count Karnstein spending the night with her. Count Karnstein tries to send Gustav and his men away. The two argue, but at the end of it all, Gustav stands down. Still, Count Karnstein mocks the Puritans and throws Goethe at them. In frustration, Gustav points a gun at Count Karnstein, but Joachim, his loyal guard, stands in front of it. However, the Count is not afraid of Gustav's threat, since he has the Emperor's favor, saying that the Emperor will hang them all if they hunt Count Karnstein. As the Puritans leave, they come across the graveyard where they hear a man screaming. When they get to the noise, the man is already dead with bite marks on his neck. Because of this, they track down the woman they assume to be the perpetrator and burn her at the stake. At home, Gustav starts ranting about the impurities in their town, especially about Count Karstein, not knowing that Frida is eavesdropping on them. After hearing things about the Count, Frida is immediately interested in him. When she hears about the gatherings in Karnstein Castle, Frida goes to their bedroom window to see their view of the castle from their spot. She states her desire to meet the Count. True enough, a gathering is being held in Karnstein Castle, where the Count watches as the demonic ritual transpires. It turns out Count Karstein is interested in black magic and Satanism, but has never encountered the real thing despite wishing so. Aside from that, the demonic ritual is just a show done by people hired by the Count's loyal servant, Dietrich. Because of this, the Count's boredom grows into frustration, knowing that nothing will come out of it. So he sends everyone away except for the woman who will be the sacrifice. So, Count Karstein completes the ritual himself. He strikes down a dagger on the woman's torso, unknowingly spilling her blood inside the tomb. Accidentally, he manages to resurrect a woman, Countess Mirkala Karnstein. Then, the Count starts being intimate with Mirkala, who tells him that he will become one of the undead if he gives his soul to the devil. So, Count Karstein doesn't hesitate to sleep with her. Mirkala tells him to look in the mirror, showing that she doesn't have a reflection. This proves that the Countess is a vampire. She immediately bites Count Karnstein, who accepts it. Straight away, the Count's reflection starts disappearing as well. The next day, Caddy brings the twins to enroll them at a school. There, they meet the headmaster, Ingrid, alongside her brother and the school's choir master, Anton. When Anton sets his eyes on the twins, he's immediately drawn to Frida and starts conversing with her. Frida talks to him about Gustav's witch hunting. Therefore, Anton clarifies that he isn't a part of their brotherhood. Still, Anton says that Gustav is a good man, so Frida tells him that she doesn't want a good man. On the other hand, Maria seems to be fond of Anton. Outside, Frida catches a glimpse of Count Karnstein, so she puts herself within his line of sight. Count Karnstein goes to talk to her, but Gustav comes by to warn him not to speak with his nieces. That night, the twins get into a fight with each other because Frida plans to sneak out and see Count Karnstein. Although Maria pleads for her not to go, she's determined on her decision. She even hurts and threatens Maria not to snitch. When Frida arrives at Karnstein Castle, she joins a meal with the Count, Goethe, and Dietrich. During the dinner, Count Karnstein insults Goethe and calls her a peasant. Aside from that, the Count asks her if she thinks Frida is beautiful. Taking offense, Goethe talks back to the Count and attempts to leave. 
However, Count Karnstein doesn't let her. He orders Joachim to subdue Goethe so they can punish her. While Goethe is bound to the wall, Count Karnstein reveals to Frida that he is a vampire. Afterward, he bites Frida and turns her into one. Despite being apprehensive at first, she immediately accepts the situation and tries to kiss the Count, but he doesn't give in. Instead, Count Karnstein lets Frida feast on Goethe. Meanwhile, despite being in their bedroom, Maria feels the slight pain of the Count's bite on Frida, yet she doesn't get the marks. On the other hand, Gustav and his men are burning another woman already. At their home, Anton expresses his anger to Ingrid, mad that innocent women are dying because of the Puritans. But Ingrid reroutes the conversation to talk about the twins, saying that Anton's favor towards Frida is apparent. Although Ingrid states that Maria is nicer, Anton points out that he can tell the twins apart and that there's a mysterious, fiery quality about Frida that he likes. When Frida gets back to their bedroom, Maria reprimands her for always sneaking out. She tells Frida that Gustav realized one of them was gone. Hence, Maria pretended to be her twin sister to cover for her. Apparently, this made Gustav start hitting her with a belt. Maria hopes that Frida will cover for her too, because she'll get lectured again. Except Frida isn't fond of the idea. Frida even says she'll kill Gustav if he lays a hand on her. The next day, Gustav pays a visit to Anton. It turns out Anton sent a letter to their church complaining about Gustav's reign of terror. But instead of taking his complaint seriously, Gustav is sent to check whether Anton is a devil's servant. The two get into an argument about Gustav's strategy. Gustav tries to justify his action by saying that the burning purifies their town from evil. However, the killing isn't what Anton is worried about. Because Anton studies history alongside superstition, he showcases his knowledge about vampires. He points out that burning the bodies will only let the evil souls reincarnate in another body. Therefore, Anton tells Gustav that they should start using stakes in decapitation instead. The conversation ends with Gustav warning Anton not to interfere with the ways of their brotherhood. He even leaves a vague threat directed towards Anton and his sister. Afterward, Anton tells Ingrid to leave for a few days under the guise of visiting a family member to protect her. Although a bit suspicious, Ingrid agrees to follow his request. However, she assumes that it's because Anton wants to be left alone with Frida. That night, Maria pleads with Frida not to leave because she is frightened of Gustav. However, Frida is worried about something else, anxious that she might be tempted to bite Maria if she stays. So, she leaves to find some other victim. As she wanders alone in the woods, she manages to lure an unknowing victim inside a cave. There, she doesn't hesitate to suck the man's blood. The next day, while Anton takes over Ingrid's class due to her absence, Gustav barges in with his men. As he sees that they're carrying a body with them, Anton is immediately angered at the tactless display. Despite Anton trying to send them away, Gustav is adamant about showing him the victim, even in front of the students. It turns out the body is Ingrid's, found dead with bite marks. As everyone gasps in shock and terror, Frida is the only one that has a knowing smirk on her face. At night, one of the Puritans wanders alone and comes across Frida. She starts seducing him and he gives in easily. But of course, this is all to drink blood from him. The man screams in utmost horror, notifying the Puritans who are currently in their church. As the Brotherhood surrounds Frida, she starts feigning innocence in front of his uncle. She pretends that vampires have attacked them. However, Gustav doesn't buy her act because there's still blood on her lips. Though she still tries to act like she didn't do it, Gustav pulls out a cross. This makes Frida flinch, showing her fangs for everyone to see. So they immediately take Frida to jail. Back at home, Gustav takes a belt and attempts to punish Maria, but Kathy blocks him at the stairs. She vouches for Maria and her innocence, knowing that Frida is the tainted one between the two. Although Gustav insists on going to Maria, Katy tells him that she's sleeping while holding a cross. Because of this, Gustav lets it be. Afterward, Katy pleads for another alternative for Frida, hoping that they won't kill her. But Gustav tells her that it will be up to the Brotherhood to decide, not just him. When Gustav leaves, Katy goes upstairs to check on Maria, where she hears her sleep talking that Frida has been seeing Count Karnstein. As Caddy leaves to warn Gustav about it, Count Karnstein appears from the corner of the bedroom and attempts to take Maria. But he stops in his tracks when he sees that she's clasping a cross to her chest. However, as Maria moves around in her sleep, she drops the cross giving him the opportunity to continue with his plan. Meanwhile, as Frida is still in jail, the Brotherhood unanimously decides that she must be burned to the death. So, in order to save Frida, Count Karnstein kidnaps Maria to replace her with her twin. Despite carrying her out, they manage not to wake Maria in her sleep. They arrive at the jail where Count Karnstein hypnotizes the warden to obey them. There, they replace Maria with Frida. Despite knowing what will happen to her sister, Frida escapes with Count Karnstein. 
On the other hand, the Brotherhood finishes their meeting and plans to storm the jail, but Anton arrives, stopping Gustav before he leaves. He asks whether the accusation about Frida is real, so Gustav convinces him that it is. Just as everyone exits the church, Kanti arrives, looking for Gustav, but nobody is there anymore. At the house, Anton arrives to look for Maria. Right away, he sees Frida pretending to be her good twin sister. He starts comforting her with a hug, but Frida longs to bite his neck. Still, she plays it slowly. Frida starts charming Anton and shows him a lewd display. However, Anton catches sight of the mirror and sees that she has no reflection. Frida starts tackling him on the bed, burying her fangs for him to see. But Anton manages to grab the cross that Maria dropped and escapes Frida's grasp. After throwing the cross at her, Anton immediately rides to the Puritans having Maria bound already. Although Caddy arrives to vouch for Frida, she doesn't know that it's actually Maria until Anton comes to her defense. As he tries to convince the Puritans of their innocence, Gustav merely thinks that he's also stricken with the devil's charm. But he tells Gustav to test them and holds a cross in front of him and Maria. After proving their innocence, Caddy tells them that Frida is at the Karnstein castle. Because of this, the Brotherhood returns to their church to have a meeting. However, some Puritans hesitate to seek out Count Karnstein because the Emperor favors him. But Anton manages to rally them together, telling them not to fear attacking the Karnstein. So, Anton instructs them to use a stake or decapitate the Count when killing him. Immediately, the Puritans equip themselves with the proper weaponry before storming the castle. In the castle, Frida is afraid of the oncoming attack. However, the Count isn't fearful, knowing fire won't affect them. He thinks that the Puritans will only try to burn them. However, Joachim, watching the Brotherhood arrive, warns them that they have proper weapons. Therefore, Count Karnstein starts feeling afraid. Hence, he tries to escape with Frida, but not before ordering Joachim to hold off the Puritans. The men face off with Joachim, managing to kill two of them, but he's immediately outnumbered. So, one of the Puritans drives a stake through his torso. Meanwhile, Frida and the Count escape through the tunnels. Once they reach the back door, Count Karnstein makes Frida exit first, worried of an attack. True enough, Gustav waits for them at the other side and doesn't hesitate to decapitate Frida. Seeing this, the Count runs away in terror and locks himself inside the castle. On the other hand, Maria runs to look for Frida, feeling the pain of her twin's decapitation. Not knowing that she's already dead, she goes near the castle's back door, only to be taken by Count Karnstein. Anton, who is following her, sees this and goes to the Puritans to warn them about the hostage situation. As the Brotherhood flocks inside the castle, they watch Count Karnstein hold Maria from floors above, about to drop her down. However, Gustav comes up from behind to attack him. The Count welcomes his attack, displaying arrogance that he can't beat him. Surely enough, Gustav misses his axe, so Count Karnstein throws it back at him. While Gustav is dying, he throws him down floors below. Then, the Count tries to bite the incapacitated Maria while everyone is preoccupied with Gustav. But Anton notices this and immediately throws a spear in his direction before running up to Maria. When the attack lands, Count Karnstein starts decaying in front of them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.